from every corner of the world comes the one moment when all plans to brilliant white. The one moment when you can say, this is high adventure. Yes, this is High Adventure, the meeting place for the Society for the Preservation and Purveyance of Strange and Suspenseful Stories of Men and Women, those living the one moment in their lifetime that deserves and preserves the meaning of High Adventure. And for this session, I'm your host, with a story called Backlash on the Meeting Agenda. It concerns a man who ran away too far and too long from murder. And, of course, that man must tell it. His name? Jack Hartford. Yes, stand by for action and adventure. For this is the beginning of another transcribed high adventure. When winter weather arrives, the time for extra caution on the part of drivers and pedestrians also has come. Walking or driving in wintertime can be dangerous with the slippery streets and sidewalks. Visibility for everyone is poor and calls for extra care and attention. Cars and pedestrians can appear from seemingly nowhere. Here are a few rules to practice when you're driving in the wintertime. Adjust your speed to road and weather conditions so you can stop and maneuver safely at all times. Be sure you get the feel of the road every time you start out when streets are slippery. Then drive at a speed safe for the state of the road. Keep your windshield clear of snow, ice, and frost. And be certain your windshield wiper blades and defrosters are in top-notch shape. After all, in order to avoid danger, you have to be able to see it. Use tire chains on ice and snow. Never slam on your brakes. Pump them. This message is brought to you as a public service. <laughs> can a man run? I suppose that depends on the man. I've known some that got no further than the range fence before they was turning around and heading back. And I know others that run most of their life without stopping and looking where they come from. I guess I was somewhere in the middle. It was five years since I was in Broken Arrow, and now I was riding down the main street because I just couldn't run no more. Must have been a hundred times in that five years I turned my pony's nose toward Broken Arrow. Somehow something always interfered. Now I was back, because when you've done something wrong and you know it, there's only one way to make it right. Howdy, mister. Howdy. Barbara around? Out back. Be back in a minute. Looks like you could use a razor. Yep. Been riding long? A month, maybe. Well, just how you feel. You get the itching and the scratching so you wonder why God didn't leave them whiskers to the animals. Okay, Jed, we've got some water, and now we can get a customer for you, Jeannie. Well, mister. You the barber? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Well, I wanted to shave. Don't let her fool you, cowboy. This little gal swings the meanest razor in the panhandle. Want to give me a try? Well, sure, but I reckon this fellow's ahead of me. Help yourself, mister. Got all day, nothing to do. Step up, get slaughtered, cowboy. That church around? No, sir. <laughs> he thinks he's in Dallas. Why? Rather face the door. What was that? I said... Nothing. Let's get these whiskers off. You know around here, ain't you? Could be. Never seen you before. I remember that. Take it easy now, Jeannie. What's your name? You can call me a cowboy. I already did. I mean, what's your real name? Cowboy will do. I swear, every young buck in town's been after Jeannie here since she hit Broken Arrow. Oh, and shut I... up, Chuck. You ride in, Mr. I said Internet. shut up. Uh, where are you from? A little bit of every place. That ain't much of an answer. It wasn't much of a question. He's a deputy. I know. Yeah, well, uh, maybe you're right. Yeah. Now, just lean your head back, cowboy. We'll have you slick as a pick and a poke in no time. Yeah, but she don't put her band on you, mister. It's a rock and razor. 
Trevor with a yard of balls. You just keep your big jaw from flapping, or I'll tell your wife you've been getting store bought and shaved again. Cost me a new dress. Last time you did that. Then just mind your tongue. You blushing, Jeannie? <laughs> I swear. Judd. Women's like heifer calves. They don't know whether to break right or left. But there's no break one way, and that you can count on. Get out of here now. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, cowboy, but that judge gets me so hot under the collar that... There, that's got it. It's okay. Don't let her kid you, mister. It's all part of the game. First she chops you up, then she charges you here for bandages. Haven't you got some place to go? Got to show this is more of a first aid station than a barber shop. Somebody to arrest or something? Well, people come here to get a leg set and a haircut. Get out of here now. Go on, get. <laughs> Better be in Broken Arrow Lawn, Cowboy? That's hard to say. Just riding through, huh? Not exactly. You're in business? Might say that. I'll be through in a minute. Hey, I come to think of it, what are you doing in Broken Arrow, mister? Like the gal said, business. What kind of business? Uh, Will you stop talking so much or I'll never get you shaved? Yeah. You know, I swear, I, uh... What, uh... Be quiet, you two. There's, uh, something about you that, uh... Oh, finished. Thank you, ma'am. I was going to say there's a dance tonight at the... Jack Hartley! Hello, Judd. I knew there was something about you. Don't move, Hartley. Don't you even breathe. You don't need the gun, Judd. Get away from him, Jeannie. That man's a murderer. What? Over here, next to me. Now, Hartley. What are you for the shave, ma'am? Two, uh, uh, two bits, cowboy. You keep your hands up, Hartley. This one shave I'll be glad to pay for. Want to make that rope fit nice and snug. I don't want it, Judd. Go on, take it. It'll be the last shave he ever gets. Now, Hartford, out that door, and if you're so much as wiggling don't here... Don't worry, I... this is something I've been trying to do for five years. Keep moving. About that dance tonight, ma'am, I don't reckon I'll be able to make it. Let's go, Judd. <laughs> Look what I got for you, Ben. Huh? Jack. Jack Hartford. Hello, Chef. Hey, where'd you come from? I'm over at the barber shop. Stopped in for a shave. Thought I ought to look nice and clean when I give it to myself up. I knew there was something about him the minute he walked in. Never thought I'd see you again. Well, I'm here. Sure, Jack, sure. Give up meek as a lamb, I did. I guess there ain't much fight left in him. Something like that, Judd. Well, what do you want me to do? Do? The whole town knows he killed Sam Turner. Don't know no such he thing. He did. Everybody knows it. Why else did he light out right after the killing, leaving a good spread behind and everything? Ain't a soul in this town don't know he killed Sam in cold blood. Now, take it easy, Dad. Easy, easy, you say. Here you are with a cold-hearted murder standing on a you and you say, take it easy. I know how it looks, Judd, but how things look and how things are are two different things. I'm telling you, he killed Sam Turner. Ask anybody in town. Did anybody see him do the killing? Well, no, but... That ain't necessary. I'm afraid it is, Judd. You see, as sheriff of this town, I'm anxious as you are to see that justice is done. But I don't want to get the wrong man, either. He come back, didn't he? Yeah, he did, but I still can't lock him up on circumstantial evidence. you got to have more than that before you can charge a man with murder. I can supply the evidence you need, Sheriff. You? Yeah, you see? I told you he was a killer. What kind of evidence? Never mind what kind. I can supply it. That ought to be enough. It's enough for me, Hartford. Well, it's up to you, Jack, whatever you want me to do. I want to be locked up. Okay. It's a fine thing when a killer has to ask to be put in jail. Give me his guns, Judd. You bet the sheriff. And I'm telling you, we better get fast action on this, because the whole town's going to know about it in five minutes. That'll be all, Judd. Maybe you think so. But I've got different ideas. Why'd you come back, Jack? I come back, that's all. Why? Because I couldn't run no more. That don't sound like you, boy. No? Don't sound like it at all. I guess there's lots of things about me you wouldn't recognize now. You changed, Jack. Running does that to a man. I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it with my own eyes. There's something about hiding in the mesquite that gets under your skin. Makes you hard and mean like the snakes that share the prairie with you. I rode out in the sand a hundred nights with nothing but my horse to talk to. Afraid to make a fire to cook my grub on. Jumping at every rustle in the brush. There's something to you, and I ain't going to do it no more. Yeah, I see. Now, look, Jack. I'm giving you back your guns. I don't want them. You do like I say. I'm staying here. You want to ride on your hands? You get out in that brush and lay low for a couple of days. Give me time to straighten this thing out. No. Look, this town's been pretty quiet for the past five years. 
Everybody's forgotten Sam Turner and everything about him. Now you come riding in and blow the lid off the place. You do like I say and everything will be all right. When the time's right, I'll come looking for you. How do I know I can trust you? You can trust me, Jack. I won't let you down. Okay, but I ain't running no more for nobody. If things ain't settled down in two days, I'm riding back into town. That's okay. Now get going before it's too late. There's a horse out back. Take it and get out of here. Remember, I'll be back. Get going. Look out, Jack. Get the gun. There's a shot and started to run. Then a bullet flies into my shoulder like somebody hammered a red hot rod into me, and I stumbled and fell. The dirt down hard in my face, my lungs filled the yell, but the sound wouldn't come. Then I was on my feet again, with the arm hanging useless and aching at my side. I reached the horse, dragged myself into the saddle, and dug him hard in the ribs. An element of danger, a keynote of things to come. For this is the kind of story that only can be called... High Adventure. When a stair creaks and there's no one there, or a hollow voice seems to echo through an empty room, don't be afraid. You're just tuned to Mutual and programs throughout the week that are the tops in mystery entertainment. In addition to The Falcon, the debonair adventures of Michael Waring, you hear The Hall of Fantasy, where past masters of the mysterious bring you tales of the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Mickey Spillane's That Hammer Guy comes to explosive radio life with a hard-hitting intensity he's famous for. And High Adventure recreates the thrilling moment that comes once in a lifetime. Crime Fighters takes you into the world of modern police machinery, laboratory technicians, and the county sheriff. And the crime files of the Flaman yield up the strange tales of detection by an expert psychologist. John Steele Adventurer and Official Detective are other shows to be heard. Hear them all throughout the week, over most of these same stations. I lay low in the mesquite the rest of the day. The sun burned down on the prairie like fire, and there wasn't no shade, no place. For a while, I tried to fish the slug out of my shoulder with a knife, but I couldn't get at it. About four in the afternoon, a posse come out of town and passed a couple of miles from me, but they didn't double back. Things was better after the sun went down, but the pain in my arm was nagging and fretting, and my throat was like a dried-up water hole. About midnight, I couldn't take it no more, and I headed into town. As far as I could see, there was only one place to go. Who is it? Hold my door, ma'am. Please. Who is it? Please, ma'am. What do you want? It's me, Jack Hartford. I saw the light in the back of your store. Go away. I don't want to have nothing Please, to do with Please, ma'am, I, I need help bad. Leave me alone. Ma'am? Please, let me in. I told you to go away, and if you don't, I'll hold for the sheriff. I'm hurt. I won't have nothing to do with a murderer. Please. No. I'm sorry. i got to have help. Stop it. Stop it. You want to wake up the whole town? Help me. Stop it. Oh, it's enough. <clears throat> I don't mean to be no trouble. You are hurt. Drink. You can get me a drink? Here. Sit down. I've got no whiskey. What'll have to do? Water's fine. Here. Take it slow. Uh, what happened? Shot me. My shoulder. Who? Don't know. Somebody. Yeah, it's better. Sorry I kicked in your door. It's okay. Needed help. You're the only one I can think of. Take it easy. Slug. If I could just get the slug out, the it go away. Where is it? The shoulder. The back. I tried, but I couldn't reach it. The judge said you were good with bandages. <laughs> he was just spoofing. I know, but it ain't hard to do. Well, what do I do? Just fish it out with a knife. I'll try. But if I help you, you got to leave. Sure, sure. Okay. Let's see the arm. <laughs> oh. What a mess. Where's the knife? Here. It's very clean. It'll do. Now what do I do? Just stick it in. Fish around and hit the slug. Okay. Let me know if I hurt you too much. I will. It's bleeding. It's good. You feel anything? Yeah. Hit something that time. Work it out now. It's coming. 
the town. It's coming. There. I've got it. Got something to tie it up with. I should ought to do fine. Lean forward a little. Yeah. I'll be as good as a doctor, Dillard. I want to thank you for your help. I wouldn't let a dumb animal go around here. I counted on that. I didn't mean it the way it sounded. I know. I just got away from the sheriff. The whole town's talking. Why'd you come back? I needed help. You should have kept right on riding. That's where they're sure to find you when the posse gets back. They ain't back yet? No. Seen them ride for two or three days before they give up. Two or three days, huh? Now, don't go getting any ideas. The sheriff's still in town. He didn't go with the posse? They left them behind. He's not the most popular man in town right now. I see. Why'd you kill Sam Turner? Right enough to talk about it, if you don't mind. Never can tell about a man. I reckon not. Never would have picked you as a killer. No? Oh, well, you're hard, all right. Plenty hard. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I suppose a man has to be. And nobody else is going to take care of you if you don't. But to kill something else again. It sure is. There. Can I have a hold you? Thank you. Miss Jean? Yeah? You've helped me a lot, and I thank you, but I need more help. No. i got to stay in town tonight, and i got no place to go. No. There's something i got to do before I turn myself in again. I, I said... won't be in the way. I can muck on the floor here in your sitting room. If you don't get out of here, I'm going to call... You expecting somebody? No. I don't want you found here, neither. Get behind the door. Who is it? Bill Creek, Miss Jean. What do you want, Chad? Can you open the door? Just a minute. I saw the light on. I thought maybe he's in trouble. No, no. Everything's all right. You sure now? Being the only able-bodied man in town tonight, I thought maybe I'd better... Oh, well, no. Yeah. Everything's fine, Sheriff. Just want to be sure. Well, you can be sure. I am. Uh, you better take care of that hand. What? For the bad cut you give yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good night, Miss Dean. Good night, Sheriff. Why didn't you turn me in? I don't know. You had your chance. Why didn't you do it? I don't know. I'm glad you didn't, but I was ready either way. You can put your gun up, cowboy. I must be crazy, but whatever it is, I'll help you. I spent the next day in the girl's place while she went down and opened the shop to keep up appearances. But late in the afternoon, she came back and told me she had the horse I'd asked for. This was something I'd rather done alone, but she wanted to come along, and I couldn't see no harm in it. We rode out through the back of town and headed north through the prairie to the Turner place. The shadows was long by the time we reached where he was going. Is it much further? Just over the next rise. We're almost back to the Turner place now. It's about a mile this side. There it is, down the hollow. Come on. Yeah, right here. You sure this is the place? I'll never forget it. Oh. I ain't been back since that day, but I'll never forget it. I've seen it a hundred times in my dreams. Just like it is. That crooked tree over there. Everything. Why'd you come out here? I'll show you. Come on. That'll be right about here. I buried it at the foot of the tree. What? A gun. Can I help you? I'll do it. I just thought you were on I'll do it. Here, let me. You can hardly hold the knife. This is my job. Okay. Here it is. Neat little 38. I don't know what to say. Why? Frightened, I guess. Why? I guess I was hoping you hadn't done it. Maybe that's why I helped you, but now I... Don't try to figure it out, lady. But I want to. Will you tell me about it? Someday, maybe. Not now. All right. I don't have to know. Maybe this ain't the way a lady should talk, but who says I'm a lady? It's almost dark. Let's get going, cowboy. You and me. We'll get on our horses and ride and leave the whole thing behind us. Just ride straight out into the desert and... Oh, over on that rock. Keep down. I will. There. Now we're out of range. Who is it? I don't know. Let's get away from this, cowboy. Last night, you think the sheriff knew I was there? Why? You saw the blood in your hands. Yeah, you did. You must have known. Somebody must have followed us out here. Yeah. There he goes. Where? Over the rise. Yeah. Who is it? Don't know. Couldn't see. Must be headed back to town. Oh, looks like that's that. 
check. I don't like this. Neither do I, lady. Please, let's go away. I can't. Please. I can't, I tell you. What's happened has happened. Listen, lady, if I'm ever going to look myself in the face again, i got to go through with this. Now, let me alone. Okay, cowboy. I guess I knew you were going to say that, but I hate you for saying it. Whatever you got coming to you, I hope you get it good. Thanks. That makes it a lot easier. And when you swing, I'll be cheering with the rest of the crowd. Don't yell yourself hoarse. You'll never hear me. Before you go, I know you'll do me one more favor. What? When you get back to town, look up the sheriff. Tell him if he wants me, I'll meet him on Main Street at 10 o'clock tonight. It'll be a pleasure. So long, sucker. <laughs> A story of pressure that can end in many ways. And we'll return in a moment for the climax of this story that only can be called High Adventure. School is a very important part of a child's life. How does your child like it? Are there enough teachers or is he complaining of so many students in one class? Does he go all day or is he on half day because there aren't enough classrooms? If the above problems have not reached your school system yet, they may. There has been a high birth rate in recent years with a resulting increase in school enrollment. In your community, this may mean that you will need more buildings or perhaps added textbooks and probably you'll require more teachers. To meet this rise in school population, your community should start preparing now. Education has always been an important part of our American way of life. Our children deserve the best education we can provide. Each successive generation requires a better level of schooling. It's up to us to see that they get it. Don't wait until the rise in school population is an emergency in your town. Prepare for it now. This message is brought to you as a public service. Turner, seen it every night in my dreams. 
I paid you, Jack. It was my idea to bury the gun and not tell no one. I know. I know. I shouldn't have let you. That see from the office. Confession. Even the night shot at your first seat. It's all there. Everything. I was going to burn it if it had been you. <coughs> ben? Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy. Sure you won't change your mind? No, lady. I got a lot of finding out to do. The whole time, won't you? I'm afraid I wouldn't be much good to the town right now. I want you to. To nobody. How long is it going to take? I don't know. When some of the coldness is gone. When I don't feel like I got to do it for myself. Wait it is long, like it won't make much difference. That helps, ma'am. Can you kiss me goodbye? Huh? I said... Lean out of that saddle, lady. Hurry right back, cowboy. I'll do just that, ma'am. I'll do just that. emotional experience of a lifetime, the kind of story that only can be called High Adventure. Time was when being able to hear the latest news almost as fast as it happened by radio was excitement enough, but today's listeners demand and get much more. Now a mutual listener can choose the kind of news he likes best to suit the need of the moment. From early morning until late at night, Mutual's core of expert correspondents and reporters is on the job to bring you all the news all the time. Whether your preference is for quick, crisp, and factual reporting, or for thoroughgoing and detailed analysis, you can find what you're looking for on Mutual, your network for news. Among others of the mutual names for news you can hear are Robert Hurley, Cecil Brown, Cedric Foster, Frank Singizer, Sam Hayes, Holland Engel, and H.R. Bockage during the day, Monday through Friday. Nighttime weekdays, there are Fulton Lewis, Jr., Gabriel Heater, Bill Henry, and Frank Edwards. Weekends bring Helen Hall, William Hillman, Bill Cunningham, and Fred Vanderventer. All heard throughout the week over most of these stations. <laughs> This has been another weekly meeting of transcribed High Adventure and heard as Jack Hartford was Jack Orison with Charlie Holmes, Mary Ashworth, and Don Douglas. Our story was created by Elliot Drake and the entire production was under the direction of Robert Monroe. Of course, all names and characters heard in our story were fictitious and any similarity to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. And at next week's meeting, we'll meet a man who found a stranger in the woods. A man who could change the entire world. It's the story called The Visitor. The Visitor, next week on High Adventure. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.